Hello guys, welcome back to this channel. Today we are gonna talk about the JSLider class. It is a GUI component that allows the user to select a value by sliding the knob within the bounded value or a track. In this particular project or video, we are gonna be using two classes. The first one is the main class where I have my main method and then I'm creating a frame object. And we also have a second class, which is called MyFrame. And this class is inherited from the JFrame class. And I'm going to implement the change listener interface. So I will say implement change listener. I need to import the change listener class here. And I also need to add on implemented methods. So this is gonna add the state changed method. So I have the constructor and inside that constructor, I am determining the various variable or attributes of the frame. So we have the layout and all. So now let's declare some components globally. I'm gonna start by declaring my slider. So I will say J slider because that's a Java class used for creating a slider. So I'm going to import the slider class. Uh, I need to create a panel. I'll call this panel. And then I need a label, say J label, label. So I'm gonna import these classes as well. So now in the constructor, I'm gonna instantiate these components, the slider, the panel, and the label. But before that, what I'm gonna do, uh, will set the size of the frame. I will say this, that set size, I will say 500, 500. And then I can simply comment the layout manager. So I'm going to use the default layout manager and I will instantiate my slider. So I will say slider, new J slider, like this. I will do the same thing for panel. I'll say panel, new J panel. And then for the label, I'll say label, assignment operator, new J label, semicolon. So we can also set the minimum and the maximum value of our slider. So you can come to the slider constructor here and you will pass in some parameter. The first parameter that we're gonna pass is gonna refer to the minimum value of the slider. So I would say zero. The second parameter I need to pass would make reference to the maximum value of the slider. I would say 100, for example. And then the third value would refer to the starting value of the slider. I would say fifth. So that's it concerning the slider. We can also play around the slider by using certain methods to declare some attributes of our slider. We can actually set the font of this particular slider, for example. So we say slider that set font, new font. So we can say console font that bold and then the size we can say 18 like this and let's import the font class so that's it we can set the size of the slider we will say slider that we can use this the preferred size so we say set preferred size new dimension and we say 300 so import the dimension class so after doing that we can add the slider to the panel so that will be panel and add slider. And we know that panel uses the flow control layout by default. And then we can also add uh, the label to panel. So we say panel that add label. Uh, let's set some text to the label. I say this is a slider. Okay. So now after we have done that, we can add the panel to the frame. So this that add panel. Now let me run so you can see how the slider is looking like. So here is the slider, we have the text, we have our slider here. And by default, the value of the slider is showing at the middle because we said the minimum, uh, the starting point of the slider is zero, the maximum point of the slider is 100, and then the middle is 50. The starting by default is 50. So 50 is actually uh, half of 100, all right? So, we will try to output some text, some paint track on our slider. So we will do that by applying a certain method called set paint track. 
So we say slider that set paint track. Now let me run. We will add some more methods. Set paint labels. That will be true as well. So let's add another method called set major tick spacing. So that will be slider that set major tick spacing. I would say 25 like this. And let me run. Okay, now you can see some labels showing on the slider. So we said the spacing is 25. We can change that. What if I say 10 like this and then run? Okay, as you can see, uh, I will try to change the size of the frame and then that of the slider as well. So I'll say 500, 500. And when I run, now you can see how this is looking like. Okay, so remember these lines of code, paint track and then the set major tick spacing and the set paint labels. These three lines of code are responsible for showing, you know, these labels here, the numbers 0, 10, 20 to 100. So by default, as you can see, the slider is showing horizontally, but we can also change it in order to make it show vertically. So one way to do that is to use a set orientation method, apply it to our slider. So we will say slider set orientation, and we will use some swing constants uh, that vertical. Now let me run. So as you can see, the slider is now showing vertically. Okay, so by default, it shows horizontally, but now if you want to change it to show horizontally, you can remove this line of code or you can simply write horizontal here. Horizontal, when you run, now you see it's showing horizontally. All right, we can also play around with the label. You see here, we actually set the text of the label here. We can actually remove that. We will use the set text method and we will try to also inverse the positioning or the alignment of the panel and then the label. I want the label to actually appear before the slider. So I will first add the label and then add the slider. So here I will say label, I wanna set the text of my label. So what we wanna do is that we want text of the label to reflect the numbers on our slider. That means that when this slider arrow is pointing at 50 here, we actually want our label to tell us that the slider is pointing at the number 50. If it is pointing at the number 80, we want our program to output telling us that, you know, the slider is pointing at the number 80. So that's what we are going to do. And we will use the label component to do that. So we will use the set text and we will write some text. And uh, in this particular example, I want to consider these numbers from the slider to be prices. So I'm gonna write some text that will tell me the price of a certain item. So I will simply say the price of the item is, and then I need to add a method that will allow me to capture the value from the slider. So here I will simply say slider that get value. And then I will also, add the dollar sign like this, right? So this would capture, this line of code would actually capture the value from the slide. Now let me run. So as you can see here, I'm having the label saying the price of the item is $50 because you can see my slider is pointing at the value 50. For the moment, if I move the arrow, you know, nothing would actually happen to my label or to the get value method here. Okay, so we need to define that in our state changed method. But for now on, you can see that when you use the get value method, it's being able to read, you know, the value or to capture the value from the slider. So that's actually what I wanted to show you. Let me change the orientation of the slider and say that it's going to be vertical like this and then run. So this is how it's showing. What if I reduce the width of the slider and then run? I'll say 150 here. So now you can see we have in a label. Uh, let's increase the size of the label a little bit. 
uh, label that set font new font so we'll say console us and here we'll say font that bold and then the size let's say 18. let's run so now you can see the size of the price of the item is 50 dollars all right so the get value method that we are using here will return the default value of the slider even when you move the slider pointer up or down the value will not change to fix that we need to add a change listener to the slider and then we will go inside the state change method to write some lines of code let's add the change listener to our slider so we will simply come here and say slider that add change listener and inside the brackets i will simply say this so now in the state changed method here is what we need to write we will simply say label that set text we will simply repeat the same string we wrote here copy and paste like this all right so this line of code is actually going to overwrite this line of code here and what this is saying is that we want to listen to our uh, slider so whenever we listen to the slider and determine the position of the pointer we want you to get that value and make it appear in this particular string so that's basically what this is going to do it's going to listen to any event happening on the slider the event can be you moving the pointer if you move the pointer to a particular value now the program is going to listen to that and then it will return the value being pointed at and insert it in this string and it will set the text of our label all right so let me just show you when you click on run now you see by default it's showing 50 dollars and when i increase that you can see that the number is also changing okay when i come to 100 it takes me to 100 all right so we can increase the size of the frame so now whenever you move the pointer you can see that the number here is also changing so it's as simple as that you simply uh play around the get value method you place it in your label here and then in your state changed you repeat the very same line of code and this line of code is actually going to overwrite the first one that you added in the constructor and then you have your slider working your program being able to capture the value of your slider pointer so guys that was how you could create a slider and how you could actually add a, a change listener to your particular slider and how you can get or capture the value from your slider so I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share, to comment and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.